So you're probably wondering what happened. And I'm gonna tell you exactly what happened, how it all happened, how to prevent it, how to treat it, and how to do it most importantly without spending thousands of dollars at the vet. So make sure you watch this video to the end and I'm gonna show you one of the secrets vets don't want you to know. You really gonna tell them, Daddy? So if you're wondering how this happened, this is my thousand square foot puppy playground where I had most of my dogs out playing. Wait, before I tell you the story, let me tell you what I mean by don't go to the vet. What I mean is stop going to the vet for every little thing. Okay, I guess this was like <gasps> a fist size hole in her neck. So this wasn't really a little thing. But what I'm trying to tell you is that even situations like this that you would normally panic in and you would think is much more severe, even in a situation like this, going to the vet can be the wrong answer. The right answer is you being able to treat your dog at home yourself without occurring those large vet bills, not chancing your pet's health by going to the vet where the sick, infected animals are, not stressing your pet out by going somewhere else when you could treat your pet in the comfort of your own home where they are the most comfortable, and who knows when you can even see the vet. Are you gonna get an appointment for today? Tomorrow? Next week? When are you, when's the vet even gonna be able to see your dog? If you have the knowledge, you can take care of your dog right then. There is no waiting. As soon as you identify the problem and you diagnose the problem, you can start the solution. And the care will be coming from you, someone they're comfortable with. So again, Go allowing the least me. amount of stress. Now you don't need a four year degree to be able to take care of your dog effectively. You don't. And these vets, they are not Superman, Superwoman, they are not, they do not have special power. What do they do when you get to their office? They ask you the question. They ask you what the, what, how's the dog been acting? They ask you to explain to them what the dog's been going and through. And that tells you that you already have the knowledge. You have it. They're taking what you tell them and then they're just gonna throw some stuff back at you. You already have the knowledge inside you. So, as long as you got some common sense, and if you're watching me, you got some common sense to, to watch this video this long. So if you got some common sense and you learn some basic knowledge, you're gonna be able to treat most things that happen to your dog yourself. And if you have access to meds with some medical math knowledge or some dosage charts, you're really gonna be able to take care of almost everything with your There's no dog. need to go to the vet, except for certain things like x-rays and certain equipment that you don't have access to. Nobody knows your dog better than so you. So as long as you're receptive to your dog's different behaviors and how your dog acts and you know what's normal for your dog and what's not normal for your dog, you're gonna be able to diagnose a lot of things yourself. I'll give you an example and keep it simple. It's things like, you know, is your dog eating and playing? If your dog is eating and your dog is playing, your puppies are eating, and they're playing right there, you can rule out not to panic. There's so many times where people are gonna be panicking over things. Is your dog eating? Is your dog playing? Yeah, your dog's fine. It's when your dog stops eating, when your dog's not playing, when your dog's acting lethargic, when you, don't know your, when you see your dog's breathing different, when you see your dog's doing something different, that's when you need to start paying attention and figuring out what's going on. If you have access so to meds, even though some of these drugs are prescription drugs, there's ways to get them. Either you got a guy or a lot of these have to get it in a different form. So it'll be the same active ingredient, but it'll be packaged as a fish medicine. It'll be packaged as a goat medicine, as a horse medicine. And then you can get it over the counter. And it's the same active ingredient that is in that prescription product that your vet is gonna charge you five, 10 times for, not to mention the vet visit, not to mention the stress and the aggravation driving all around to the pharmacies and paying all this extra money. Source your meds yourself and learn how to dose them yourself. Either find the, weight, the dose charts, the weight charts, or get some knowledge on some medical math. Now, if you want to really take your knowledge to the next level, a really good tool to get is the Plum Veterinary Handbook. You want to go get that. If you're interested in what I'm saying and you want to learn and you want to learn about different meds and be able to safely and effectively medicate your dog yourself, you want to go, you're going to want to get that handbook along with do your research. Keep watching people like me. I'm not the learning. smartest and I don't know it all, but guess what? 
in my network of people, they probably do. If I talk to the right one, I ask the right question, I can probably figure out what I want to figure out. Um, I'm blessed to have a network of professionals, other breeders, other ethical, reputable, bre reputable breeders that I trust that are dealing with dogs and puppies in volume so I can gain a lot of data from to learn what works, what doesn't work, where does this come from, how did this happen, why did this happen. So I trade a lot of information with other respected breeders and I have medical professionals that I am very close with. Medical professionals that have 20 plus years in canine medicine, reproductive vets and different medical professionals that I'm able to go to for knowledge that I'm able to go to and I'm constantly asking questions. I'm always asking them questions. Even when I think I got it figured out, I check back with them. Hey, am I right about this? Make sure I'm right about this. After I've had situations like that enough and I know I'm hitting it on the head, now I don't have to go to them for certain things. Um, and that's how you gain knowledge, trial and error. But these dogs are important and they don't deserve any errors, any failures. So I'm not saying just like, go start trying stuff without knowing what you're doing. Don't try or do anything you didn't, you don't know is what to properly do. Like if you don't know the, the dosage chart, do not do it. I'm not telling you to start grabbing meds and just <laughs> dosing them any way. If you don't know how to dose the meds, don't do it. If you can't get the meds and you can't get the proper dosage, that's not for you. Stick to the other level. And you might have to go to the vet for certain things but I'm trying to tell you how you can avoid the vets for the most part, because you wanna avoid those huge vet bills, especially if you're another breeder and you have a lot of dogs and you wanna be able to put money into your program and the last thing we ever wanna do is take away the care that our dogs deserve, right? These dogs, you never cut corners on your dog's health and quality of life. So if you can cut down the money on it, that's more money you can put towards their quality of life. And you, again, you doing it is gonna be a better situation for the dog most of the time. Cause you can diagnose them better. You can keep them comfortable. A lot of times them. vets miss things. A lot of times vets misdiagnose things. And when you misdiagnose something, now you've set things in reverse and you've made things worse, a hundred times worse, where you were better staying at home instead of even going to the vet. I'm not saying don't ever go to the vet. I don't want to scare you guys from going to the vet when you need to. What I what want you to do though is empower yourself to have the knowledge to not have to go to the vet. Because when you just are relying on going to the vet and believing anything they tell you, you might get sent on the wrong path sometimes. A lot of times, a whole lot of times. A whole lot of times. I got so many stories to tell y'all and I need to do this on some future YouTubes and really tell y'all some of the horror stories people have had with going to the vets and the misdiagnose that I've had. So many that I've had. So many that I've heard from other people. And I'm definitely going to tell you more about that and I'm going to do future videos on that. So let's take this chance right now to make sure you're following me. If you like what I said so far, hit that like button. Make sure you're subscribed to me and make sure you're following me on all my other socials. Big Bone Bulldogs on Instagram. Unfortunately, that account is disabled right now. So go follow my backup Instagram, Big Bone Bulldogs underscore DB. Follow my TikTok, Big Bone Bulldogs. My alternate TikTok, The Bulldog Breeder. The same as my YouTube, The Bulldog Breeder. And of course, my website, BigBoneBulldogs.com. So back to what I was saying. Sometimes these vets can send you in the wrong direction and make things way, way, way worse like what could have happened with this situation here with Malibu. Even though Malibu has a hole the size of my fist in her neck, I didn't panic. I didn't run to the vet where the vet would have wanted to suture it back up. And if they would have done that and trapped any bacteria in there, what would have happened? That bacteria would have had nowhere to go and it would have re-ruptured, flamed everything back up, put her through more stress, cost me more money, and take us backwards in us, our goal of healing her, curing her. Be very mindful of what these vets tell you because they're never going to look you in the eyes and tell you, I don't know. When has a vet ever told you, I don't know? Never, because they won't do it. They won't do it. They're not gonna tell you they don't know. They're gonna smile in your face 
and they're going to tell you, tell you anything and hope you go for it. And your dog ain't going to say nothing. Your dog can't talk, so your dog can't be like, no, that ain't what, that ain't it. No, he's wrong. No, that ain't what's wrong with me. Your dog isn't going to say nothing. know whether what he's saying is true or he's false. He's just going to pick something. If he wasn't able to properly diagnose it, hopefully you have a good vet. Hopefully you find a good vet. I'm not bashing them all. I'm not bashing all vets. There are good vets out there. I am friends with lots of them. But they're few and far between. There's a lot more bad vets than there are good vets. Same thing with breeders. There's a lot more backyard breeders now with the boom of 2021, especially with bulldogs, than there are good breeders. There's a lot of bad breeders out there. I'm the first to admit that. And, and there's a lot of bad vets out there. And that's what we're talking about today, the bad so vets. So sometimes they're going to be completely wrong and they're just going to tell you anything and send you down a path that might really screw you. You got to remember, Veterinary medicine is a for-profit business. So they're always looking to add on stuff. They always want to charge you for this or run this test or do this or give you this med. So they're going to over-medicate a lot of times. They're going to give you unnecessary testing, unnecessary stress on your dog. It's not always about money. Let's make sure we do remember this will save you lots of money by not going to the vet. But don't you dare make it just about money. I don't want y'all to make what I'm saying just about money. I'm sure the money is probably what is the most, not necessarily the most important, but um, it's what got y'all's attention, as it should, because you want to save as much money from going to the vets to put it back into your dogs. But also, you just want to make sure your dogs get the best health care possible. And with some common sense and some basic veterinary knowledge, access to meds, access to how to properly dose them, some medical math, some dosage charts to properly, safely dose them. You are the one that can give your dog the best care it needs. So yes, Malibu had a fist-sized hole in her neck. And, you can get, I, and I know you guys are still wondering how the hell that happened. And I'm going to tell you. But first, let me tell you about what I did to treat it instead of running to the vet. Instead of panicking, like most people would have done, I gotta go to the emergency vet right now and pay all this money and, like I said, get it sutured up just to maybe have bacteria still in money. No, let me tell you what I did. I'll give you a little, I'll give you a little insight to what happened before I give you the whole story. So she had an infected wound down here that created a huge abscess. Look at her, look at how big her throat got, look at how swollen it got. My audio got messed up right here, but this gives me the perfect chance to add in that I immediately started her on a heavy antibiotic, which is crucial. I happened to have the meds here, so I did not have to go to the vet. If this happened and you don't have meds, you need to go to the vet to get the meds immediately. Worm compresses are very, very powerful. I'm a very cynical person. Like, if I don't see that it works, if I haven't seen that it works, if my mind can't wrap around how it works, I don't go for it. So you might think warm compresses, like, what's that doing? Making her maybe feel a little better? It's making her feel a lot better. It's very comforting on the dog. So you should definitely be doing it, regardless, because of that, right? So you might think warm compresses, like, what's that doing? Making her maybe feel a little better? It's making her feel a lot better. It's very comforting on the dog. So you should definitely be doing it, regardless, because of that, right? But I'm telling you, it's effective. Warm compresses are effective, effective, effective. Don't sit there feeling like you're not doing anything. Heat and cold therapy are amazing. The benefits we can get from just heat and cold therapy, icing things, heating pads on stuff, hot co warm compresses are amazing. Don't let that go over your head. So I started by doing lots of hot, warm compresses that really breaks down the infection in there and it making it want to get out and it opens up those pores. It opens up those pores, allowing it to come out, just kind of seeping and breaking that stuff down because you want to get it out. We want to get it out of her. We want to get that infection out. And see here, I tried piercing with the 18 gauge needle or a 16 gauge needle, can't remember, trying to, um, trying to lance it and get the infection out and give her some relief, but I wasn't able to. Just gave her more warm compresses, and then eventually the next day, boom. 
we got it to start coming out. It's starting to rupture, it's starting to leak out. You can see I'm just literally pouring the infection out. And oh my God, it smells so bad. You're lucky you guys can't smell this. But I started pouring the infection out, kind of massaging it, trying not to, you know, I don't want to hurt her and she's kind of still sensitive, but moving it around and getting those pockets open and getting as much of that infection out. And I mean, man, there's a lot of it in there. So I did as much as I could, got as much of the infection out, kept giving her warm compresses. And then by the next morning, pow, that thing just blew wide open. Like, a, like I said, like I could put my fist in there, baseball size hole, um, which is amazing though. And I'm telling you, as soon as that happened, that next morning when, she, when I let her out and that thing was blown out, she was right back to her normal self. So a lot of people would have panicked. I didn't panic. Let me assess the situation. As you can see, what's the first thing you guys notice here? Look at how pink it is. Look at how healthy it is. Even though we have a fist size hole in her neck, it's healthy. That's pink, healthy flesh. And what is she doing? She's running around. She's happy. She's eating. She's good. So I know she's good. I know she feels good. And what I'm seeing looks good. It's pink. It's healthy. So you know what? We just got to close this up. And I know it doesn't need sutures. Um, even though I showed this to one of my vets who does health certificates for me and he told me it needs sutured up, I knew it didn't. I, I reached out to some of my other medical professionals and they, they ensured me that she'll be able to heal just fine. It's going to take a while, but through the process of granulation healing and the secret Manuka honey that I packed her wounds with that feeds the granulation healing, She's going to be able to heal it all on her own without sutures that could possibly trap in more bacteria and just take us in a bad direction. So I started cleaning it out. I used saline solution to spray into her wound. As you can see here, spraying in here with the saline solution, getting all that out. You don't want to trap any bacteria in there, so we want it nice and clean. We can see it's pink and healthy, and it looks pretty clean, but let's flush that out. After I flushed it out, and I'm sure that I don't have any more bacteria in there, now it's time to pack it with the Manuka honey. The Manuka honey is what really aids the whole granulation healing process. So, and you can get this for $10 off of Amazon. So again, no need, no need to run to the vet and spend mountains of money, because you know they're gonna run that bill up, especially for something like that. When they see something like that, they know you're panicking too, and they know they can get you for everything you got. So don't let it happen. Make sure you're following me. So now we started packing it with the Manuka honey, and then I used the non-stick gauze, uh, gauze pad, wrapped it with some gauze, wrapped it with whatever this, that other tape is called. I started doing this every day. So I would change this bandage out every day. I did that for about the first 10 to 14 days. As you can see here, every day, opening it up, letting it breathe a little bit, making sure it's clean, making sure it's not infected, packing it some more with some Manuka honey, and rewrapping it. I got two litters on the ground right now, so if you guys are looking for puppies, tap in with me. I got fluffy Frenchies and Frenchies on the ground right now, and I got mini and micro English Bulldogs coming. Hopefully two of my girls are pregnant right now. Um, so around day 10 or something like that, then I started switching to like every other day, changing out the bandage. Did that for another week or so, and then, then got to the point where I'm at right now, where we're down to about a dime size, fingernail size hole, and I've just been leaving it open, still rubbing some Manuka honey in there. She's mostly on crate rest most of the day, so it's not like she's running out, getting it all dirty and nasty, not to mention it's in a place up here tucked in her neck where she's not gonna get it too nasty or dirty. And of course, I'm observing it every day to make sure it doesn't get infected or nasty. Can you imagine how much this would have cost? If it, all right, now let me finish telling you guys how this all happened. And I had the crazy one here, Malibu, separated because of her hormones. Malibu, come here, girl. Malibu. I had Malibu on the outside, but when she's up here, Malibu, come here. Her crazy little self decided to come flying in here and attack Hamburger Mary. If you don't know my girl Hamburger Mary, make sure you're following me on all my socials. And of course, make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel and you will know who Hamburger Mary is. Malibu came out here. She got into a scuffle. 
I wasn't paying attention because I thought everything, I thought I had her on the outside. I knew the dogs in here were all good. I was in the garage doing something I couldn't hear. So they had it at her for a while. When I got her out, she didn't look too bad. She just had some scratches, no like puncture wounds, just some scratches, little bite marks on around her neck and area, neck stuff, neck area, nothing crazy. But as dog bites generally do, they got infected. There's a lot of bacteria in the dog's mouth. So those bites got infected, which then her neck abscessed out really big. It was very swollen, eventually rupturing, leaving us that hole that got us to where we're at now. What you could do in the future, which I didn't do this time, is as soon as she got into that fight, even though there was nothing major going on, because I knew there was dogs, I should have put her on antibiotics right away. I didn't. Two days later, those simple little scratch bite things abscessed out and we got this. So in the future, what I would tell you to do is if your dog ever gets in any kind of scuffle with another dog and the mouth is involved, put your dogs on antibiotics right away. Something as simple as Clavamox will be perfectly fine, amoxicillin even. So that is how you can prevent this.